this lesson, we are going to discuss the processes and landforms along plate boundaries. At the end of this video lesson, you should be able to differentiate the types of plate boundaries and explain the different processes and landforms that occur along plate boundaries. We know that the tectonic plates are responsible for dragging the continents from one place to another. In the study of geokinematics, the directions and speed of the plates are determined to analyze what processes and landforms may be formed. There are three directions of movements the tectonic plates can follow. In this video lesson, we are going to make use of this tectonic plate map from S3. The boundaries drawn in blue are the boundaries of plates which move away from each other. The boundaries drawn in red are the boundaries of colliding plates. Lastly, the boundaries drawn in black are the boundaries of plates which slide against each other. Each movement then corresponds to different geological structures and processes along the borders or boundaries of the plates. We are going to discuss each plate boundary, and the first one is convergent boundaries. Convergent boundaries are areas where tectonic plates move towards each other. In this type of plate boundary, the main result of the movements of plates is collisions. This boundary is also called destructive boundaries because the crust gets destroyed along the process. There are three different types of convergent boundaries based on the place involved. The first one is the oceanic continental convergence. In this type of plate boundary, the oceanic and the continental crust collide. In this process, the oceanic crust will collide under the continental crust for the reason that it is denser. The subducted oceanic crust will then melt because of the heat from the mantle and the friction of the collision. Once magma accumulates in the melted region, pressure will build up forming a volcanic arc above. The subduction zone or trench is another formation of this process. An example of this plate boundary is the Cascade Mountain Range. This mountain range which stretches from Washington to Oregon and California is a product of the subduction of the oceanic Juan de Fuca plate under the continental North American plate. This mountain range has non-volcanic mountains such as the North Cascades and volcanic mountains such as the High Cascades. The next type of convergent plate boundary is the oceanic-oceanic convergence. In this type of plate boundary, the colder, denser, or older oceanic plate will subduct. This is the case because older oceanic crusts have cooled down first than younger oceanic crusts. Density then increases as the oceanic crust cools down. After subduction, melting will also occur until magma goes to the surface of the earth to form volcanic island arcs. The difference between a volcanic island arc from volcanic arc is that the former starts as an underwater volcano until it becomes a volcanic island. The latter volcano forms on the continental landmass. Another formation on an oceanic-oceanic convergence is the trench since subduction occurs. An example of this plate boundary is the Republic of Palau. Palau is an archipelagic country formed by the subduction of the Pacific Plate under the Philippine Sea Plate. The volcanic origin of the geologic structure of Palau shows active volcanism when it was formed. However, it is classified as extinct since the last eruption was recorded for at least 10,000 years ago. Other archipelagic countries such as Japan and the Philippines are dominantly made of products of oceanic-oceanic convergence. The next type of convergent plate boundary is between two continental crusts. In this plate boundary, the two thick continental plates collide and both of them have a density that is much lower than the mantle. This prevents subduction. Fragments of crust or continent margin sediments might be caught in the collision zone between the continents. The intense compression can also cause extensive folding and faulting of rocks within the two colliding plates. This deformation can extend hundreds of miles into the plate interior. This causes the formation of mountain ranges. This boundary is evident in South Asia, particularly in Nepal, India, Bhutan, and Southwest China. The countries mentioned are known for being mountainous because of the collision of the Indian plate to the Eurasian plate. This results to intense mountain building as seen in the Himalayas mountain range. The Himalayas is the largest mountain range in the world which borders Nepal and China. This houses the world's highest peak which is Mount Everest. Now, let's discuss divergent plate boundaries. Divergent plate boundaries are zones in the Earth's crust where the plates move away from each other. These are also called constructive boundaries since new crust is formed. There are two types of this plate boundary. These boundaries only occur on similar crusts. The first one is the divergence between two continental crusts. In this type of boundary, mantle activities makes the continental plate bulge upwards forming a rift valley. 
it continues to receive extensional forces until it breaks apart into two continental crusts forming a lake. It will get bigger through time until it becomes a sea and an ocean. An example of this boundary is the Gulf of Aden. The Gulf of Aden is already in the stage wherein the continental crust has broken apart already. Particularly, these plates are the Arabian and African plates. This is a part of the East African Rift Valley where the African plate is in the process of splitting into two, the Somali plate and the Nubian plate. The second divergent boundary involves oceanic crusts. In this type of divergent boundary, crust is formed in the spreading center which allows seafloor spreading to happen. It creates mid-ocean ridges which are also volcanic in nature since new crust is formed with the release of magma. An example of this process is the process of splitting of Iceland. Iceland is found on top of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. This Mid-Ocean Ridge is responsible for splitting Laurasia into North America and Eurasia and Gondwana into Africa and South America. Iceland is splitting together with the spreading of the North American and Eurasian plates. The divergence of these two continents on top of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge is evident in the geysers in Iceland which are vents in the Earth's surface that periodically eject a column of hot water and steam. The last blade boundary is the transform boundary. Transform boundaries, also known as conservative boundaries, are areas which do not create or destroy crust since the plates just slide past one another in horizontal motion parallel to the plate boundary separating the two plates. Since plates just slide past one another, no formation occurs in this boundary. One common example of this boundary is in San Francisco Bay Area in the United States. This is where the sliding happens. San Francisco Bay Area experiences a lot of earthquakes because of the horizontal and opposite movements of the Pacific and the North American plates. This is also known as the San Andreas Fault. On October 17, 1989, a magnitude 6.9 earthquake hit the San Francisco Bay Area, killing 67 people and causing more than $5 billion in damages. Now, to summarize this video lesson, let us review the following key points. Convergent plate boundaries lead to the destruction of the crust through melting or folding. Divergent plate boundaries lead to the creation of new crust in ridges and rift valleys. And lastly, transform plate boundaries are conservative because crust is neither created nor destroyed when plates slide against each other. And that ends our discussion on the processes and landforms along plate boundaries.